Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the Professor, and this is the Moment of Truth. And now, the Friday Crime Report. My original crime report that I was going to do was about this hostage situation in Tennessee a few days ago, where the police were shot by these two sibling suspects, but they killed them rather than arrest them. A couple of non-black suspects shoot at the police, and the police don't take them in alive? It's like some sort of Christmas miracle or a unicorn or something. Though, frankly, I'm shocked that these two would be involved in criminality. I mean, you can tell by looking at their previous mug shots that they're both law-abiding citizens who were clearly caught up in an unfortunate circumstance that they had nothing to do with. And their shaggy, overgrown beards and the dim-witted looks on their faces are all the proof you need that inbreeding is strong with these two. They're siblings, all right, and I'll bet you their family tree has no branches. Now, lighting up these two outstanding citizens had been the plan, but I can tell some of you here are TV heads, I'm not disparaging you, but I've had three folks mention this particular incident, so I'm calling an audible and tackling the curious case of Zachary Ty Bryan. Those of you who don't watch that much TV have probably never heard of this guy, but if you're a Gen Xer or a millennial, you'll remember Brian from the sitcom Home Improvement. Well, he's been arrested. Again. It seems he just can't keep his hands to himself. This arrest is for felony assault in violation of the Abuse Prevention Act, which is used when someone is accused of attacking a person who had taken out a restraining order against them for domestic violence. So, given that information, you won't be surprised to learn that this is far from the first time that Zachary Bryan has had a brush with the law, and not just for domestic violence either. He has a long-standing criminal record, going back 20 years. He had previously been arrested for DUIs in 2004, 2007, and 2017. He claimed that he started drinking when he was 14 years old, and that he has an issue with alcohol. Well, at this point, he doesn't have issues anymore. He's got subscriptions. And the worst part is the drunk driving's not even the worst crime he's committed. Two years ago in Oregon, he had a domestic violence case against him for abusing his then fiance. So when it comes to slapping women around, Zachary Bryan is something of an old hand. In that 2021 case, he was charged with harassment, coercion, strangulation, interference with making a report, and second counts of menacing and assault in the fourth degree. But he's got genetic immunity from law, so you guessed it, those charges were dismissed in return for him taking a measly two-count guilty plea. Yeah, he had six charges against him, and he was allowed to just plead guilty to menacing and assault in the fourth degree, both of which being felonies. But he didn't have to go to prison. Instead, he received three years probation and had to participate in a batterer intervention program. Now, keep in mind, that was two years ago. So he's in violation of his three-year probation. No word about that. But we can see how well that batterer intervention program worked out. Now, the domestic violence charge from two years ago, this was after Me Too was a thing. Though you didn't hear much about this case, did you? And nobody from Time's Up was on his bumper about it either. Believe all women, they say, unless the women are accusing someone who isn't black, in which case it's catch me if you can. And as if the multiple DUIs and the multiple domestic violence charges weren't enough, Brian's also had scandals involving money, too. You see, Zachary Bryan was an early adopter of crypto and reportedly he's made millions of dollars off of it. He hasn't had to work due to all the money that he supposedly made, and yet somehow Zachary Bryan's been accused by at least four people who allege that he stole their money through a fraudulent scheme tied to an agriculture technology startup in individual amounts ranging from $5,000 all the way up to $25,000. And the total amount of money he's being accused of defrauding is close to $50,000. It's been alleged that he did it by offering fake contracts that have no value outside of the paper they were printed on. Now, with an impeccable track record of sobriety, fidelity, and square dealing behind him like that, you won't be surprised to learn that Zachary Bryan has been a darling of the white right-wing media like Fox News. He loved to go on there and rail about how conservative he is and the hypocrisy of Hollywood liberals and how all these celebrity elitists are alienating the rest of America. Did I mention that this guy is not only a Hollywood celebrity, he's also a crypto millionaire? This guy is the quintessential celebrity elitist. 
He drinks and gets arrested for DUIs but never goes to jail. He gets into domestic violence beefs but doesn't go to jail. And yet, he's whining about elitists? Talk about no self-awareness. And if Zachary Bryan's self-pitying gibberish sounds familiar, it should. Because he repeats the same talking point as another home improvement star, the guy who played his father on that TV show, Tim Allen. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Tim Allen has been kissing the white rights behinds too and doing the whole Hollywood liberal elite shtick. He's been a conservative shill and doing all his high and mighty crap too. He used to praise Donald Trump, saying that he liked that Trump ticked people off. And like Gina Carano, Tim Allen's also tried the pathetic lie that being a conservative is like being in 1930s Germany. Very ironic he would say that. He's right, though not in the way that he means. Because like most conservatives, Tim Allen's never actually bothered to read a history book. In the 1930s, the Nazis destroyed their own parliament building. In 2021, Trump's supporters laid siege to the Capitol and desecrated it. This is why the white right hates history books, because it exposes who and what they are. People like Tim Allen were the ones who turned Germany into a living hell a hundred years ago. People like Tim Allen were the ones who tore up the laws in the hopes that they could shut people up. And as always, the people destroying the country blame the individuals who they attack. And these celebrity conservatives who love to rail on about Christianity and small-town America values and middle America, who always have a good lecture at hand talking about personal responsibility, as soon as you ask them about people like Zachary Bryan and his problems, all of a sudden, well, we can't judge. The personal responsibility lecture goes straight out the window. So it's do as we say, not as we do. Their empty moralizing and sermonizing applies to everyone, except themselves. See, these white right-wing celebrities like Tim Allen and Zachary Bryan love to whine about how Hollywood isn't Christian enough, or isn't enough like middle America, because pretending to be down with small-town values makes these conservative celebrities feel connected to real life, even though they don't live in any of these small towns and wouldn't go there in a million years. It's the same reason white celebrities on the left love to pretend to care about certain social issues. Both of them draw from the same well, and they do it for the same reasons. But when the conservative celebrities do it, they're particularly obnoxious, because they're whining about the very place that they chose to work in. And they also complain about how it's so immoral and undermines American values, and yet they also gripe nonstop that they can't get any work in this immoral industry because of their politics. So they hate the values of Hollywood, and they hate the personal politics of their colleagues in Tinseltown, but they also resent that they're not able to get more work in an industry they have contempt for, and that they're being deprived of the chance to work with these moral hypocrites who they can't stand. They also complain about how terrible it is that they can't express their political beliefs, while at the same time complaining that Hollywood leftists need to shut up. Sounds like they're the ones being the hypocrites, but then again, why not? It's not like they're going to be made to pay a price for it. Zachary Bryan has already pleaded guilty to two felonies for domestic violence, but he didn't serve a day in prison, and the white media treats it as a non-story. Meanwhile, Jonathan Majors is being raked over the coals for one charge, which he's still fighting in court. Nate Parker's still being demonized by the white media for a false rape charge, even though he proved his innocence in court in the South with an all-white jury. Meanwhile, you have Zachary Bryan pleading to felonies about abusing women, and it's not a big deal. Danny Masterson was convicted on two counts of rape. Bill Cosby never was, but guess who got all the headlines, though? And as for sentencing, well, we're still waiting to see how many years Danny Masterson will actually get. Also, we're still waiting for the surviving Danny Masterson series on Lifetime, which I think is scheduled to debut somewhere between the surviving Woody Allen Lifetime series and the surviving Roman Polanski series, and the We Need to Talk About Louis C.K. special that Kamal Bell's putting together. This is why Zachary Bryan acts like he does. He has genetic immunity from the law and from white media scrutiny, and he knows it. So don't expect this moral failure to learn anything from this latest arrest, because with a record going back at least 20 years, it's safe to say nothing will get through that cinder block on his shoulders. He's been getting in trouble with the law for two decades now, and it wasn't his fame that got him off the hook. 
It's the two-tiered racist injustice system that gives genetic immunity from the law based on skin color. Money, fame, and white privilege are a lethal combination. Zachary Bryan's living proof of that. For all his phony moralizing, he refuses to see that he's no better than the very liberals that he whines about, and in a number of ways, he's actually worse. A shame that nobody can talk sense to this reprobate, because what this star of home improvement needs is a hell of a lot of self-improvement. And that's this week's Friday Crime Report. Keep your eyes open and stay on alert, because there's a lot worse criminals out there than the ones the white corporate media chooses to show you. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Bounds of Prosperity, Edmund Ramsey, Harold Simpson, Alice Ransom, and Gregory Franklin. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black Empowerment only exists because of you.